Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. Since last time, I did a little tiny bit of backtracking inside the waterway, back to the waterway number one at the, um, the final treasure chest that you can get in this area, because there's a fishing spot that I missed. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that fishing, and then meet you back at the orbit station where uh, I ended the previous episode in the underground waterway. Uh, back. So, let's just, uh, head on and get rid of this quest monster. Make sure that you have a nice earth elemental attack uh, equipped on Elliot. That'll be kind of key to this fight. Oh, yeah. What do you mean does it have good footing? The whole place is flat. Looks fine to me. Maybe there's like a lot of moss or mold or something on the ground? I don't know. Yeah, well, too bad he's not my party, so let's do this! Oh, we're the adversary. Go. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and use a uh, motivate to right. strike them. Let's do this! Yes, right. Me. Hey. Right. And uh, Elliot, we're gonna have you use Grand Press. Because let's see if I can't look at this guy. Yeah, he is weak to her. So that's definitely the way to go. Uh, I can hit some of the little shark dials too. That works. I'm not really too concerned about the shark dials. I'll get rid of them eventually. <laughs> Yeah. Between the Grand Press pretty much it's just killing them and destroying them, and then um, we have uh, Machias' like all hitting craft pretty much with the petrification shell. Then we have Laura being able to come with a brilliant spin and hopefully hit all of them. That would be lovely, but then we would have the case, but that's fine. Because it's gonna suck that other one in so I can hit him with other uh, nice abilities. Okay. Perfect! Nice! Here we go. Okay, let's see. Now I want to use Arc Slash. Go ahead and get some delay on this guy. I do not want him getting any attacks in if I can really help him. And uh, the reason for that is... Uh, where is it? Okay, there it is. Arc Grand Press. The reason for that is every time that it attacks, it actually restores... Um, 50% of the damage that it inflicts, it restores to itself. So, yeah. Um, if it gets one attack in, that's fine, but many attacks, not so great. Oh, before I can miss, that works too. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about this. You know what? Let's use Elliot's seventh Rhapsody. Let's see. There it is. He has 200 CP anyway, so let's do it. This performance just for you. Status helps. Things like, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Faint does like a ton of damage against Thor. He is, is, he's very susceptible to Faint. He's very susceptible to a lot of status ailments. So you can go that route uh, if you want to. As you can see, I have poison on him. I have Art Attack down, Defense down, I have Confusion on the guy. So, yeah. And then he killed himself with poison. So that works for me. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Just. That was pretty easy. Oh, they are getting along. Yeah, but now you're like best of friends. Oh, if you say so, too bad Fee wasn't in my party again, because she's kind of, uh... Yeah, until she gets her next couple of skills, she's not too hot as compared to these other guys who just got brand new skills and they're very powerful. Because Fee's big thing was that she could hit huge area pretty early on with her skills, and she's kind of fast. But now that I have the Raven Master Quartz, I have other people who can be just as fast, like Reen, and uh, I have other people who can hit huge areas like Laura and Machias. Not to mention Elliot's magic attack power really nicely. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's get on out of here. But uh, I'm gonna meet you actually in the waterway too. Because remember that stone that looked a little bit different? 
I'll meet you there. Well, here I am in that waterway. Let's see. Oh. A nice little cutscene here. What is it, Reed? Yeah, what's going on? Oh, what? A slight breeze or a draft. Hmm. How could you notice a draft in an underground sewer? The whole place would be drafty. I mean, there's a river going through it, for God's sakes. Yeah, look at that. Um, yeah, I do think so. Of course there is. Oh, okay. Well, give it a shot. Whoa. Secret passage! I don't know. Oh, yeah. The direction of where? Hmm. Of course, Machias won't tell us. No one tells us anything. Thanks, Machias. Thanks. Some team member you are. Ugh. Oh, uh, let's see where... Okay, no. Don't want to go this way yet. I want to go ahead and go over down here and grab some treasure. Hopefully avoid this guy, but I doubt it. Ooh! Lots of seven. Love getting seven. Yeah, there's... there's, there's, there's to me, it's like the best chest you can get. That one looks annoying. Chest. Watch out. Okay, Celestial Bomb. Not as good as seven, like, at all, since I'll probably never use it, but it's there. Okay, so just uh, continuing on our way. Whoa! Yikes! Let's go uh, this way. And uh, there we go. Whoa! Oh, these linear paths are gonna be death of me, I swear. That's still the same enemies, though. I mean, it's not like they're new or hard or anything. They're actually really easy, I've got to say. What could possibly be up here? Turbo! Our way. Quit. Oh, a treasure chest! We're running in all these walls all the time. Ooh, the fort. Awesome. That is a group attack up spell, so that could come in really handy. But then again, I have rain in my party anyway, so I probably just use motivate. Oh, there's the exit. <sighs> We're finally there. Well, how would we go? Wait. This is the Ost District. This is Machias's uh, hometown here. I guess that's what he was uh, thinking about. Yeah. How did you not know about this? It's like a stone's throw away from your house, Machias. And you grew up here and you played here and everything, and you never knew about this sewer passage? I find this very hard to believe. There's chests and books and everything, a nice writing desk. To me, it looks just like the, um, the guild house. I don't know, it doesn't look all that different to me. Just open and barren. I'm surprised there's not a maid here or anything. This is fish and chips? Like, they're eating hot dogs. How is this fish and chips? I guess it's the fish and chips in the middle. But they said 
that they were only getting fish and chips, and now they have hot dogs in front of them. And then there's fish and chips in the middle of the uh, table. Like, they all grabbed one thing of fish and chips, and the hot dogs just happened to be here? I don't know. I feel like there was a like a translation error somewhere around here, but in, in Japanese, they got hot dogs. But here, they're, you know, eating... I don't know. It's just odd. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he seems like a really nice guy, Maki is. You really should quit being so hard on him. It's tiny. Looks pretty big to me. I mean, you have that whole open area over there. It looks really sparsely furnished, though. Oh. So you're just saving up all the money, I guess? Oh, yeah, did your mother die? I would imagine so, God forbid. Anybody have two parents in this Ooh, game? There's a photo. Oh, that. Aw, look at cute little Machias there. He looks like he had such a sweet disposition. Yeah, before he grew up to be a stubborn old nag. Stop nitpicking people's old family photos! <laughs> Honestly. The governor looks the same as ever, though. Is that woman next to him your older sister or something? Close enough. She was a cousin on my father's side of the family. Since she lived quite close, she often came to visit. Now her family was just my father and I, so having her around was a big help. The way you speak about her seems to imply you no longer see her. Did she get married and move away? She died. Around six years ago. Oh. I see. And that has something to do with why you hate the nobility, right? <laughs> so... I never really planned on telling anyone about this. But considering all we've been through, I suppose it's time I told you a little more about me. It's a long story, but would you hear me out? Uh, of course. Mm. Absolutely. Glad to. Thanks. Sis was nine years my senior. Beautiful, kind, to me. She was in every sense the ideal woman. Now, as I said earlier, we're a family of commoners through and through. But my father proved to be a very capable government official. And eventually, he was promoted to an important government position, where he started to make a name for himself. Honesty and integrity are a core part of his work ethic. So, of course, he made his fair share of enemies. But after seeing success in a number of major projects, he gained a reputation both inside and outside the government. My mother died when I was still young. But Sis happened to live around here and ended up helping us in more ways than I can count. Since she was his niece, my father always made a fuss over her. And even though she didn't live in the same house, she was like a real sister to me and a real daughter to my father. I was always so proud of her. As a child, she was practically my idol. And as you'd expect, she had countless admirers among the men of the city. But for all her popularity, she was always level-headed and sensible. So I never felt I had anything to worry about until he appeared. He was one of my father's subordinates at City Hall, though unlike him, he was a noble by birth. A man of high rank, too. The heir of a count. However, he had none of the arrogance or haughtiness one usually associates with the nobility. When I met him myself, he came across as an honest and loyal man. He met Sis when Dad introduced him to her one day, and eventually the two of them fell in love and began a relationship, despite the difference in their social status. As a child, I was frustrated beyond words. But even I had to admit that the two of them made a good couple. And Sis seemed so happy when she was with him that I had no choice but to let it go and accept their relationship. Time went on and they became engaged with Dad acting as the go-between. And that's when everything started to fall apart. His family couldn't have been more blatant in their attempts to undermine the relationship. Apparently, one of the four great houses House Cayenne proposed an arranged marriage on short notice, and the 
Count's family were up in arms at the thought he might choose to take a mere commoner as his wife. Since my father held an important post, they were limited in how shamelessly they could try to sabotage the marriage. But they began to harass and threaten her in secret every way they could think of. It made her life a living hell. Maybe she didn't want to cause trouble for the man she loved, or perhaps she did it out of consideration for my father. But all that time, she chose to endure it alone. She never discussed it or asked for help. And finally, it became so crushing that she took her own life. It was only afterward that my father and I learned what had really happened. It seems that at the very last, he had chosen to betray her love for him. But I told her, he said. I told her I'd treasure her as my mistress instead if she'd just accept that we couldn't be married. I... I just don't understand it. Why would she take her own life? After that, my father seemed to redouble his efforts. It was like watching a machine kick into high gear. With the help of his ally, Chancellor Osborne, he was able to wrest control of City Hall from the noble faction. Then, four years ago, he was appointed to his current position as governor of Heimdall. And that's how the Regnitz family came to be where it is. I don't even know what to say. So that's why you started hating nobles? Yeah. I was so furious at Sis's death. My hatred needed to be directed at someone. Anyone. First I blamed her fiancé. Then his family. Then the family of the Duke who tried to intervene. In the end, I just hated the nobility as a whole. The people, their culture, the entire idea of social classes. I desperately wanted the strength to win against them. To show how right I was. How wrong they were. But deep down, I knew the truth about my hate. I knew I was taking out my anger on people who didn't deserve it. People who had done nothing wrong. You did? <laughs> They may be from different social classes, but people are still individuals. Sis's fiancé was faithful to her. He just wasn't strong enough to shield her from all that ugliness, despite his love. And the Count and his family were only acting in their best interests, which is to be expected, really. Ultimately, I've had to acknowledge that not all commoners are good people, and not all nobles are unworthy of respect. You, Sis, might not have done much to change my opinion, but getting to know you two showed me that there are nobles who live up to that name. Machias. I have no idea how my father feels about all of this, but this is how I've come to feel. I see. You have my thanks. I'm glad you felt you could talk to us about it. <laughs> Still, I don't think it hurt to be a bit more honest with yourself. If you're willing to admit all of that, maybe you can find it in you to be friends with Eusis, too. Are you kidding me? I might accept that not all nobles are bad, but that arrogant, self-centered fool can go choke on a palm. Always mocking me for spending so much time studying or telling me I need to get out more. I don't think he goes quite that far. Besides, I don't think he does it on purpose. He doesn't mean any harm. That's the most irritating part! He does it without thinking! <laughs> well, that was a good coffee break, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Poor Machias. I really do think he's, like, secretly in love with Eusis. And, hey, he can finally use an S-break. I think he's the last holdout on S-breaks. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I'd have to look at everybody. Next time we're in Tristal, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, no kidding. Why would they start so late? But I want to say one of the NPCs said something about this being like a poor kind of downtown district, so this place starts last. Like they get like bottom of barrel. Oh, okay. Yeah, Laura's hometown is kind of, um, Oh. Oh, yeah, I guess. 
Well, summer's three months long. I mean, they would just celebrate it a different month than summer. It's not like they're having a summer festival in winter or anything. Oh, and who are you? Yeah. Maybe it's Sarah or something? Oh, a guy. Oh, oh, okay, hey. Hey, yo, uh, what's up? Everything all right? Yeah, I'm kind of shocked that he's calling me and he's not calling Machias. I mean, everybody's, uh, Arcus is on, so probably should call him, but, eh, good enough time as any, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he seems kind of shocked, too. Yeah. You know, for him not being there, why would he have those, uh, beans, like, specially ground and roasted if he's never even there? Because coffee beans do kind of go bad after a while, like they lose their potency after a couple of weeks just sitting around. Oh, no problem. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, what is it? A burglary of jewelers? Oh no! They have that really expensive tiara there too! Yikes! Oh, he left a message? Great. I think I know exactly who this burglar is. <laughs> I've played this JRPG before. I actually have. Uh, sure. I'll do it. Why not? Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, apparently we're on a first-name basis with a thief. Thief of all people. Yeah, it really does. Like in Trails in the Sky, first chapter, and second chapter, <laughs> and uh, Trails of Zero, you know, and all these games. Okay. Oh, well, perfect. Oh. Ooh. Well, yeah, we know that, but thanks. I don't know how we got a letter when we got a telephone call, but sure, whatever. Who am I to ask a judge? Well, let's head inside the jewelers, since I'm here anyway. I didn't plan to go here first, but might as well. Hey there, lady. What's going on? Yeah, that's us. Put all your faith into what are we, 16 year olds? Maybe we're 15? I actually I think that we are 15. Because I want to say they said that Fee was two years younger than she's 13. Whoa, 100 million Mira! Yeah, no kidding. I know. You would think that they would have it under lock and key in like the palace. Not here, in some public jewelry store. Oh. Oh. So it is Phantom Thief B. Of course it is. It sounds very familiar. Oh, just reputation in the capital? Oh, Liberator Thief? Yeah, we actually heard about that back in Chosen Sky the Third. He has a fan following? A thief has a fan following? Wow, that's a lot. Whoa, he stole an Opal tank? You're kidding me. That's crazy. No kidding. I thought that he only stole beautiful things, like tiaras and artwork and things like that, not the tank. That means not really beautiful. I love how we're all just like talking amongst ourselves and completely ignoring this owner. <laughs> oh. 
check it out and it was uh, just what he wanted you guys to do and in that moment he somehow stole it I'm sure how do you not have like a real security guard looking at this you know why would you open it up and take it out in the middle of the store while the store is still open why wouldn't you close the store uh, no kidding and why would you drop the tiara, or like put it down or whatever, whenever you're going to turn on the lights? You would, you know, if you're opening it up to check it out, it would be in your hand. Uh, but I guess that's, you know, takes a bit too much brain power for these people. Oh. So, what's your conditions? Why group A? Why not group B? That's odd. Uh-oh. A trial? Yikes! Well, yeah. Yeah, what is the uh, conditions in the trial? Hey there, Blue Blanc. What's up? Okay, so it's inside the Vermilion Capital. It's here in Heimdall. At the feet of the Conqueror with the heart of a lion. Huh. That's probably the statue of Emperor Dreykels, I would imagine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you say treasure hunt, I say wild goose chase. Of course, Magius is. I mean, he is a noble after all. Or at least he pretends to be. What? Well, uh, hey, but can we find this Crimson Tiara? Find out next time. I'll let's play The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And have a good day.